Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Art with Toys. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, DC Icons uh, Deathstroke the Terminator. This guy just came out on uh, 4 or 5, I believe. I was able to pick him up again at uh, uh, WonderCon over the weekend. But, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at the box. We'll take a look at the figure's accessories. And then we'll get into the actual figure after this. Taking a look at the DC Comics, DC Icons Deathstroke box. Uh, pretty standard box of what we've seen with the other Icons figures. Uh, you got the window box in the front. The figure would be here. The unmasked head would be right here. Over here would be your alternate hands. Bow staff would run down the side with his sword. Sword is sheath. Uh, you got your big gun and then you got the revolver on the side. You got number 21 in the uh, group here. Uh, with Deathstroke running down the side, not too much other than these air holes for him to breathe, I guess. Uh, on this side, again, number 21, Deathstroke emblem, DC Comics icons, Deathstroke, the Judas contract. Uh, I got that again in a different language there. DC collectibles, sorry about that. Uh, on the back, you got the other figures in the wave running along here. DC Comics, DC icons, uh, Deathstroke emblem there. It tells you it was designed by Ivan Rice and sculpted by Joe Mena. Uh, you got the DC icon or the DC emblem here. Uh, just your legal stuff on the bottom, and uh, you got your Deathstroke emblem on the top. So let's take a look at the accessories. All right, taking a look at the accessories that comes with Deathstroke. Uh, you're gonna have his bow staff, which I did find out uh, actually comes apart, uh, so you can break him in half there and uh, maybe use these as batons but this looks pretty good uh you got that uh kind of that silver kind of textury look that's going on there throughout and uh you got these little notches and and things of that nature you're gonna have your gun don't think this is a real gun but you know this would be kind of like his assault rifle uh he can hold one hand probably could go two um this looks good it's sculpted nicely uh it's kind of got that again textured look to it Kind of that silver chrome finish you can see it really nicely in the light there uh here you got his revolver this looks more realistic to me again not a lot of paint apps on these um but you know the sculpting looks nice and the uh, uh plastic that was used uh, in the mold looks great over here as far as his weapons as well you're gonna have his sword uh you got again that same silvery look that's uh going on with these other guys um, got kind of that trident look here for the handle with the gold paint um, you know nice sculpting in there so this is this is pretty nice um, his sheath so it's gonna have this peg hook or a peg hole right here on the back that's gonna go into his back uh, you got your standard orange paint you got kind of your uh, gold paint going on right here uh, so uh, and you got kind of like these Brahma bull looking emblems here you know uh, reminiscent of the rock but um, yeah, this looks good. It fits on his back well and it's proportioned nicely. You're going to get two sets of hands. You got your grippy hands here. Uh, one has more of that trigger finger on it. This one does have uh, kind of that split finger um, that you can, you know, kind of pull out and get around the trigger. So if you wanted to have him holding both guns, you could. That one, you know, typically I, you might see somebody having the bow staff or the sword in it. You got your fisted hands if you want him. Uh, just kind of with all the you know a weapon stowed away you could uh there's really only a way to stow away the sword and the handgun the other stuff you probably have to put off to the side with your accessories and then you get the alternate unmasked deathstroke head here he's got the white hair he's got uh kind of the black lines running in uh, with the texturing so it looks like you know he just got gray and uh, you know he's holding on to the last little bit of uh dark hair there sculpted nicely uh, there's a two at the bottom. Don't know what that's for. Maybe because it's the second head that comes with it. Who knows? You got kind of this goatee that goes here. He does not have like the mustache part of it. Um, good paint apps for the lips. Uh, you got the, uh, the eye patch, a little bit of the eyebrow coming over the top. Uh, you got the eye that, you know, is it's painted pretty nicely, you know, and it's not off center or anything uh, with the white, you know, other white eyebrow. And nice sculpting. I mean, if you look at this, you can really tell. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that, but you know, this looks, this looks great. So 
And let's take a look at, uh, at the figure. All right, and here he is, Deathstroke the Terminator. So we're looking at this figure, really nice figure. You know, I did want to again mention that, you know, this DC Icons, you know, these guys are going to be smaller in scale. Um, this guy, you know, he's not going to match up perfectly to your Marvel Legends if you wanted to get him in uh, in, into some uh, situations with Deadpool or whatever. Uh, but he's going to match up really, really nicely with your uh, DC Icons, uh, other figures as well. So your DC Icons Batman or whatever, um, your, you know, your Green Arrow. Um, but, you know, a nice figure. You know, if you want to, you know, just kind of take a look here. You got kind of this matte navy blue finish uh, going along the chest. Uh, again, he's wearing kind of that New York Mets look with the uh, blue and orange. Um, at the top, you got the matte navy blue on this side. Obviously, the eye part is missing. He doesn't have that eye. You got kind of the, the more bluish metallic color here. Uh, on this side, you got kind of the gold uh, with the orange paint. The eye is painted nicely, again, on this head as well as uh, on the alternate head. Um, you got the gold paint here. You got the tassels with kind of the orange and the navy blue again. Um, you got this kind of collar piece that goes along here with the rivets in it. It's painted gold. This this thing right here, I mean, just looks incredible. It's it's very loose. It's pliable. I like it. You probably could consider it an accessory as well. Um, it's the be uh, the bullet belt. Um, you can see the tips of the bullets here. You know, so it, it, really nice. The, the metallic paint. Uh, for both the blue and the orange really looks nice. It breaks up this kind of area here and, and makes the figure look more finished um, So I do like that You're gonna get kind of this blue metallic paint here uh, with kind of that mesh or uh, the scaly look You know again uh, reminiscent of his old, you know, his, his classic costume that you see um, You know you get that throughout the midsection here you get the orange here for kind of like the the brief or the short area um, you know, these pouches probably could use some dry brushing or something of that nature just to kind of give it a worn kind of look and, and really make it stand out versus this part. But, you know, it's not too bad. You got the grenades, you got the, you know, all the pouches, the big pouch there. So, you know, you could store his bullets and, um, you know, he has his, you know, again, it has his grenades. These don't come off or anything. So they're, they're on there. Um, again, more of that metallic paint through the leg. You get kind of that bell bottom boot look. Uh, again, no... Uh, dry brushing or anything there. I got a couple little nicks and things. There's a little bit of paint uh, from the blue, I guess, right there. You know, I could probably take that off or, or fix that. Um, going into the boot, just a standard orange, same as the, the this top part of the boot. And then you got the little bit of, I guess, a yellow here. I like that. You know, breaks up the boot. You got the peg holes at the bottom. You got the heel. Uh, over here on the gloves, I didn't uh, want to mention those. You got kind of this uh, uh, glove piece here. Uh, he's got kind of like this medallion bracelet piece here and uh, just the standard orange on the hand so looking at the articulation now so if you were just kind of uh, really I guess kind of pop this head up on the ball peg just a slight bit you can get some up movement so if you you know you kind of see it there he kind of he kind of can look up this actually looks pretty cool from this angle um, you know, he looks down a good bit. Uh, you know, you probably have to use a little more of the diaphragm a little bit, I guess, to get him more in the downward looking pose, like he, you know, he's thinking before he goes to, to kick some butt. But uh, you got the diaphragm here. I guess that's kind of like on a ball. So you get that kind of movement. You know, it, it'll twist if you force it a little bit. Um, you get the ab crunch. So that'll come forward. That, along with this, will give him a nice forward action. And then it gives him a really, really far backwards uh movement there so you know if you, again you want to get more of that looking up pose you, you can get that out of that so looking at the arms if you push down and then up you can get you know a pretty good range you can kind of hear that cracking in there i don't want to go too far because you're going to get that paint rub um but you know you get a normal range of motion there um you get the uh bicep swivel you get your double jointed elbow that goes about that far uh, no rotation at the glove uh, rotation at the wrist and then you get your hinge so boom and boom uh, again went through the midsection part here I do like the fact that they give you kind of this SH figure arts kind of movement right here so that you can get him to kick forward pretty far you can get him to kick back um, or if you want him just in a vanilla pose you can push that up in there um, so that's kind of nice. You get the double jointed knee, uh, always good. Uh, no boot swivel, so that's not there. You do get swivel at the ankle. You get the back and the fourth, so the up and the down. 
you get your bi uh, or your uh, ankle uh, pivot there, ankle pivot, and um, yeah. So I mean, you can get this guy in some pretty cool poses. One thing I forgot to mention when going through kind of the uh, the breakdown of the figure was the holster that is molded on. So sorry about that. Um, it really should be attached to these straps. It's not. Um, I do have a minor gripe with this. So if you take a look at you know just kind of putting the accessories in there, the gun does not go all the way in. So I found myself while posing or or whatever um, that gun wants to fall out. If you got this guy resting on a shelf and he's next to some other figures that um, don't stand very well, if they bump into him and he falls over, this thing's probably going to come out, um, and you know it could end up in the carpet. So you just be wary of that. You know you don't want to get it vacuumed up. Uh, might be worth it just to stow that in your little plastic containers where you keep your accessories so that um, you have that for when you're doing uh, pictures if you do a kind of the ACBA thing um, But yeah, so this guy is a, he's a good figure um, So, you know, we talked about the accessories talked about the box talked about the figure itself um, You know, we'll get into some uh, size comparisons that death stroke he stands uh just about i don't know five and three quarters or maybe 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 six inches uh again if you do the extend the sh figure arts style uh uh legs there that you might get them up to six but yeah he's just under six inches all right so here is a uh, death stroke along with a couple other death strokes that i have in my collection that i've collected over the years so um yeah i mean you can again kind of see that he stands a lot smaller you know not as beefy as some of these guys uh, you got the one uh, here from the video game, from the Arkham game, um, you know, with the real nice details and the slashes and the things uh, going on there. You know, he looks really good. I really love the the paint apps. I love the the, uh, the dry brushing and the things that they put on there um, to kind of just give him detail. I mean, even his weapons here just look awesome. You got the guy from the Arrow here. So, um, you know, again, this is a cool figure. These guys, you know, these three aren't going to have the articulation this guy has. This guy's got the similar articulation to your Marvel Legends, um, you know, and that's why I tend to kind of gravitate towards the uh, icons a little bit because I just love Marvel Legends. But, you know, good looking figures, you know, he looks nice with, you know, kind of your arrow setup and whatnot. Uh, and then you got more of the, you know, again, the comic book look here. Uh, with more of the armored kind of look um, you know he kind of more looks like a knight um, I do like how he has kind of like the spikes on his uh, uh, boots there he's got um, kind of the Batman gauntlets it's pretty neat big beefy gun um, really crazy looking sword the, the red eye he's just cool he's like uh, the combination of like a machine and like knight look and then you got your uh, DC icons here all right, just to give you kind of a look how he scales with your Marvel Legends, you got him next to Deadpool. Obviously, uh, you know, Deathstroke came out before Deadpool, so he, he is a heavy influence. You got Slade Wilson, you got Wade Wilson. Uh, both have the, the, the uh, regeneration powers and uh, like to use swords and guns. Um, no, I, you know, I don't know if Deadpool's really into the whole bow staff thing. Uh, then you got uh, your DC icons, Batman, probably one of my favorite Batmans. Uh, really like this guy um, Just a good traditional look you, you, you know, you could kind of see maybe around the brief area here There's probably a couple parts that these guys do share um, But you know, I, I think I'd like Batman to be slightly taller or at least the same size as uh, Deathstroke um, But it works out well, and then you got your DC Classics Robin. I love this figure picked him up uh, for 25 bucks at Frank and Sons, but uh, yeah, these guys look good together. You got uh, you know, the, again, the figure that, or the, the character inspired probably by Deathstroke. And then you got his uh, two arch enemies there. So these guys pop, man. They look really good in the screen. And, uh, you know, they, they, they got a, a lot of um, uh, potential for great uh, photography. So you could probably do something, you know, if you wanted to um, kind of do something with Deathstroke and Deadpool. Uh, where you could use some, you know, force perspectives. You know, Deadpool is, again, he's going to stand a little taller. You know, maybe have him back here. And Deathstroke a taco or something. The Deathstroke's hungry, but um, yeah. So, I again, I like this figure. So with that, guys, that is my review on the uh, DC Comics uh, DC Icons uh, Deathstroke that just came out. Uh, again, I was able to pick this guy up early with uh, Wonder Woman and Cyborg at WonderCon over the weekend. But they they just came out uh, April fifth, uh, Wednesday, April fifth. So 
if you hit up your comic book stores, you will find these. I do not ever see icons at regular retailers, unfortunately. Have seen them at Barnes and Noble, so you know that's that's kind of random. But your comic book stores will have them. Again, they're usually between I don't know twenty four. I've seen them at twenty seven dollars, which I think is a little too expensive for them. Twenty four is fine for me. I mean, they do come with the great articulation and a series of um, uh, accessories. But hey, yeah, I mean, you know, if you see these guys in stores, pick them up, let them breathe, and have fun. Talk to you later.